on the day of lockdown the slum were in the darkness they didn't had a single light in their, their home they didn't had proper water to drink they were struggling so much they don't know what to do there was no hope in their life I think we've all found the coronavirus pandemic hard in different ways, haven't we? But I think um, for people in the UK, however hard their experience has been, it, it, it doesn't compare to the experience of families in some of the slum communities in which we've been working. Um, I think particularly of Patripal in, in India, a slum community of Dalits, um, not too far from Mumbai. Imagine if you live in a shack, maybe 10 foot square, um, with six or seven members of your family, and you're told that you can't go out. So we may have felt isolated in our homes here, but we have running water, we have electricity, we have technological gadgets, we have cupboards full of food, um, and we still found it hard. But you're in, in, a, in a shack and you can't go out. And if you do go out, you will probably be beaten by the police um, because their curfew um, is very, very strict in that community. So, you know, that in itself is, is going to be incredibly difficult to live with, and it's all going to be exacerbated by the fact that you probably no longer have food. Lockdown में हमें खाने पीने की बहुत तकलीफ हुई क्योंकि मेरे बच्चे को हेपेटाइटिस भी है तीन बच्चों को तो हमें सरकार से मदद नहीं मिली और छोटे बच्चों की दवा भी उनसे पार्टी में नहीं है। सब चीज की जरूरत नहीं कि कमाने वाला कोई नहीं पापा है तो लंगड़े इनके पैसे काम धंधा होता नहीं एक छोटा भाई और मैं थी कमाने में उसका तो ऐसा हो के बड़ा एक्सीडेंट तो मैं इस काम आती थी मतलब हम घर खर्चा चलाने के लिए बहुत परेशानी आई कभी है खाने को कभी नहीं है खाने को When the coronavirus pandemic hit and lots of countries went into lockdown the first problem that we had and our, our partners overseas had was that a lot of the families who were in lockdown, much more severe than the UK actually, the lockdowns in many countries, um, they were running out of food. A lockdown order in the UK means that we stay at home um, and where we're safe, most of us are safe at home. Um, but for families in Patrable to stay at home, to be unable to work, uh, means that they're actually starving at home. The first thing that we were involved in was really trying to provide feeding to help in these situations. आपको ये लॉकडाउन के वजह से क्या क्या प्रॉब्लम झेलना पड़ा हमको भाजी नहीं मिल रही दूध नहीं मिल रहा था बच्चे बाहर जाने के लिए मतलब बाहर निकलने बोल रहे और एक चीज के लिए तरस रहे थे तो हमारे आदमी को छह महीने से काम धंधा नहीं घर ही बैठे तो आपका किसी ने मदद किया हां मैंने भाई ने किए अच्छा क्या मदद किया यही राशन और शक्कर है अपना कांदा बटाटा है भाजी है ये सब मदद करे तो आपको अच्छा लगा किसी ने मदद किया हां अच्छा लगा हमारे टाइम पे मदद किए तो हम उनका धन्यवाद करते हैं तो हमें महेंद्र सर ग्लोबल फाउंडेशन के महेंद्र सर ने खाने पीने के लिए तीन चार महीने से बहुत मदद किया क्योंकि हमें अभी मतलब मैं अकेला ही हूँ कमाने मतलब छोटे बच्चों को लेके जाके सर कमाना जरा मुश्किल हो रहा है तो कोई काम नहीं देता छोटे बच्चे के साथ में तो इसकी वजह से मुझे खाने पीने में बहुत तकलीफ हो रही थी पैसे वैसे के बारे में बहुत तकलीफ हुआ तो महेंद्र सर ने हमारी बहुत मदद की तीन चार महीनों से आज उनका महेंद्र सर का बहुत बहुत आभार धन्यवाद one of the most heart-wrenching stories that we had was from one of our team visiting in, in Patchpool. And they were going door to door with the food parcels to the families of the children that come to our centre. And as they were going from door to door, they were greeted with great joy by all the families. So we were really excited to see them and really grateful for the food. They opened, knocked on one door and the father opened the door and then he collapsed in tears. So they, they took the father aside and said, well, what's the problem? Why aren't you pleased to see us? And the father said, today was the last day. We have run out of food. 
And so with the last little bit of food, I was gonna mix some rat poison in with it so that I could kill off my whole family because I couldn't watch them be so hungry for so long. And he said, I'm just so grateful that you came. इधर से भी फल फ्रूट ले गए थोड़ा फल फ्रूट का धंधा करी तो उसमें कैसे भी गुजरा के घर चलाई थी क्योंकि मेन दो शक्कर पत्ती बच्चा दूध घर में पीता है तो उसके लिए कुछ ना कुछ तो करना पड़ता था बोले हमारे तो उसके ही पीछे हम मतलब परेशान हो गए अभी तक फिलहाल में कुछ भी नहीं अगर जो तुम मदद करेंगे उसके लिए बहुत ऐसा रहे हम जो अभी फिलहाल में जो कुछ कर रहे थे was one that came from Patrapool of a family who um, did not have children at our centre, so were not part of our initial feeding rounds in Patrapool. Um, but as their savings ran out and they became more and more destitute, um, the news of their plight reached our partners and we were able to reach out to them. And on the day that our partners went to their house, they had apparently spent, they told us they'd spent four days in a dark room without food or without water, praying to their gods. The Hindus have, have many gods um, and they prayed to the Hindu gods to come and rescue them because they were absolutely desperate now. They had two small children. They had nothing to feed them and no prospect of getting any money. And that was the day that our partners came and knocked on the door and they said, who are you? Where have you come from? They said, we're from Global Care. And they explained about Global Care and that it was a Christian charity. And they were like, well, you know, what, what is a Christian? Who is Jesus? And they were able to share with them um, something of the good news of Jesus, a God who believes that they are precious. And they said to our partners, words to the effect of, um, because we are Dalit, even the gods didn't want us. That's what they believed. You know, this whole society rejects them. And there they were in absolute desperation, praying, and Jesus came to their door. And Jesus, they say, is a God who cares for the disadvantaged and the broken. And to me, that was, that's what we're all about. Um, being the hands and feet of Jesus in communities which are disadvantaged and broken. And for that family to receive that message in such a powerful way and to receive the food that saved their lives and saved their children's lives, that's been an incredibly powerful thing to be part of. आप क्या बनना चाहते हो पुलिस से? पुलिस बनना चाहते हो? अरे बाप रे तो लॉकडाउन में भी आप बहुत पटके मारोगे फिर सबको पकड़ पकड़ के बाहर घूमेंगे तो है ना? मारोगे ना? नहीं? ठीक है आपको क्या बनना है बड़े? नेता नेता बनने का नेता बनने कौन सा नेता बनना है? मतलब कि जो मतलब कि गरीब लोग हैं लोग को अभी आसान नेशन नहीं मिल रहा है और जिधर पे मतलब कि लाइट भी जो होता है ज़्यादा इसका घर में लाइट है ऐसे पंखा है उसका ज़्यादा ज़्यादा बिल आ रहा है तो वो सब कर रहे हैं मतलब आपको जैसे महेंद्र भैया करते हैं वैसे सबकी मदद करते हैं we're working with a Dalit community. Now, to us, that's just a label, but in, in India, it's um, a critical problem for you. It's To be Dalit is to be a member of the lowest caste in their uh, caste system. Um, and the caste system in India is all about hierarchy and power. And you're born into the caste you are. You can't move from one caste to another. If you're born into a caste, you stay there. And there are expectations for your um, life and your prospects that are completely tied into which caste you're born into. So to be born into the Dalit caste, which were formerly known as untouchables, is to literally be born, in, born into the most despised, rejected, disregarded, um, forgettable people. Your life literally has no value. Um, to, to members of higher caste groups. So, so one of the problems in the Dalit communities is that it's really hard for our children from Dalit background to actually integrate into the schools. 
give you an example. We, we uh, a local businessman used to provide every year a rucksack for our children and a water bottle. And I said, well, of all the school things that are provided, you have a rucksack and water bottle, why do you do that? They said to me, because they're not allowed to drink the water from the water fountains in the school, because if they drink from it, no one else will drink from it. So the, the school decided you have to take your own water bottle if you're a dad. That's the sort of discrimination, grinding discrimination that our children go through. As Christians, we come into Patrable and we say to every single family there, your life has infinite value in the eyes of God. You are precious beyond imagining because that's what the Christian faith teaches us about the value of human life. I think sometimes our partners in the, in the UK here mis, misunderstand exactly how much impact they're having. It is the difference between life and death for some of these families that we're working with. Our partners could not take the food door to door if the people here in the UK, if our partners, if those who've stood with us throughout this time had not been willing to give us the funds to be able to make that difference. We are amazingly grateful. You know, it's our privilege to stand there in the the name of Jesus and say have some food you're precious your life is worth is worth preserving and um, that's been a precious part for me of what we've been able to be to achieve in Patrickle and that has been entirely down to the generosity of donors here in the UK we fed um, the community of Patrickle seven times over about eight months or more um, with with food parcels, with meals handed out on the streets, um, again and again saying, you know, you're not alone, you have not been forgotten, you are important. <laughs>